All right, so uh, the session is the um, 10 ways to use the number lines. Now I kind of cheated and did like two point, two, two A and two B. So there are more than 10 ways, but uh, some of them are related. In touch math materials, you have the number lines. We have our uh, horizontal, our number line is printed horizontally on one side and vertically on the other. And there are uses for both sides of these that um, I, think, I think using it vertically initially with young children is really important um, because there is less distraction than using it horizontally. I also, as I was kind of looking into uh, ways that people use number lines, I mean, I, I remember the way we used it when I was in school back in the Stone Age, but I came across online um, references, uh, a web, this guy's website, and he's written this book, Learning to Think Mathematically with the Number Line. Who knew you could write a whole book about number lines? He did. And so I put it here in case you're interested in looking at that. But um, in the introduction part of the book, it um, he says that the number lines are one of the most overlooked tools of elementary and middle school classroom. Um, a lot of times we display this giant number line, maybe above the whiteboard or across the top, close to the ceiling. The students really don't have uh, interactive access with it. But he goes on to point out that the number line has often been used to help children memorize and practice counting with ordinal numbers. And those of you who are familiar with touch math, you know that we don't, don't emphasize memorization of math facts, but we do talk about doing forward counting, backward counting, and skip counting. And so the number line is used to uh, help with all those strategies. And then um, he goes on to say that, and I, sorry, I did not catch what year this book was written, but he said that there had been a lot of research um, to suggest that the number line uh, can be used with greater flexibility instead of just using it as we are familiar with doing addition and subtraction. I mean, I think all of us, not necessarily on this number line because it only goes one to nine, but on a real number line, we learned um, addition and subtraction facts. We learned positive numbers and negative numbers. We had zero at the middle so that we know if we're adding, we're going towards the positive side. And if we're subtracting, we're going towards the negative side. So all of those, those two ways to use uh, the number line are traditional. This is how we typically use number lines. This next example is showing positive and negative numbers. Now, this is an example out actually out of the upper grades touch math kit in the, in the activity sheets. And so you'll notice that zero is the water line. Anything below zero is underwater. Anything above zero is in the air. So it gives this, it uses the vertical number line to uh, demonstrate positive and negative numbers. The, um, I think I put this one out of order. Let me, I'll come back to that one. The way, whenever I'm doing training for touch math, when we get ready to do addition, addition with, um, uh, well, addition uh, counting on, we identify the greater number. So early on in math instruction, we are teaching our students to identify the greater number. Now we can do that with a number line that's horizontal, but I recommend, especially when you're first introducing um, greater numbers, greater and less numbers is to do it vertically. Uh, with young children, you can make the comparison that this is like a, an office building. And so first floor is the lowest floor, it's at the bottom. 
the ninth floor in my building is the highest floor. It's the greatest number. It's the one, uh, the highest up. And so by looking at this and relating it to something that's familiar to the students, then they can identify the greater number, which is necessary in doing steps in uh, addition and in subtraction. The next is to recognize patterns in our number system. When in touch math, again, we don't, we don't stress and, and um, put a lot of anxiety on memorizing math facts. Those 380 math facts will come as students begin to recognize patterns in our system. Now, this is an example I got off of Google. And um, so you can see that the students are using paint, Q-tips, um, to show that as you go to the right on the number line, there it's a higher number. And when you go to the left, it's a lower number. So it's something very visual that the students can interact with and start to discover patterns in our number system. And there are a lot of them. This particular um, uh, form that I, I found this on the internet and I thought it was fascinating because it's interactive. And it, the uh, website is PBS Learning Media. Dot org. And so when I open it up, I can say, I, here's my number line, my blank number line. I want the counting numbers on there. I want all of the integers on there. So depending on your level of what, you, uh, what math level you're teaching, I want to show all the rational numbers. And then I want the real numbers. But maybe for my purposes, I don't want the real numbers and I don't need the rational numbers yet. I'm just working with the integers, the positive and negative numbers. And then eventually I show, this becomes very um, visually clear to the students how those halfway marks fit in. And so uh, if you go to that website, you can, um, have that interactive number line. So go back. All right, and number five is identifying number families. Now I did, um, I think it was actually the first two of these mini lessons that we did. I did them in back-to-back -back sessions and I did it on using dominoes for, um, doing, working out math. Touch math does have their own dominoes, but I also talked about using real dominoes. And you can see that this combines the dominoes with the number line. So the students can line up the dominoes according to their sum and um, put them along the lines of the number line. You could also do it with playing cards because they could take, um, the play, they could actually add together playing cards. You could do this system a lot of ways so that they recognize number families. And the number families are the points on the number line. Now, I thought this one was really cute because it's a Ziploc bag and they've taken a Sharpie and written a number line one to 10. And then you have the cards that you lay on here and the, the little zipper of the Ziploc is what you use to go, okay, first we would start at six and then we would add two more and the answer would be eight. So instead of using your pencil or using your finger, then uh, you use the little zipper of the Ziploc. It, you know, it's nothing magical, but it's an interesting way to use number lines and have it be interactive. Okay, now we get to rounding. And this, I, I found this very interesting because when I was taught rounding, we weren't using a lot of visuals to um, make rounding make sense to us. And so you can use, they typically use a vertical number line. 
Now, this is not touch math. This came off of the internet. I have the link down here. But if I'm going to uh, round numbers, four-digit numbers, they talk about having a starting place and an ending place. And then you mark off in between the numbers that would fall between those two numbers. So in this example, if I want to round um, 4,100 to the nearest thousand, first, my starting point has to be 4,000. My top point is 5,000. Midway is 4,500. So the students can estimate in between 4,000 and 4,500 where 4,100 would be. And so is it closer to 4,000 or is it closer to 5,000? And so using the number line helps them with uh, rounding. You can do that with uh, whole numbers. You can do it with uh, decimals. This is a touch math example came out of some of the touch map activity sheets and they did the same thing. So if I'm going to round 3.3 uh, .3 to the nearest whole number, I have to start at three. My stop is at four. So where is 3.3? .3? It's here. Is it closer to three or is it closer to four? We can use rounding at any level. So we used uh, whole numbers and then we can use decimals. The same thing applies. If I'm going to round um, 62, what's that, thousandths, um, I have my starting point is 60, my ending point is 70, and then I mark off everything in between. Then all I have to do is go and find 62 is it closer to 60 or is it closer to 70? The number line gives them the visual uh, support that maintains that equal distance between points. Here, here is another example of using, this is the horizontal number line, but using it to round to the nearest 10. You know, uh, a, just a plain old ruler is a number line. And so if you don't have number lines that have the, um, like between one, a typical ruler would be one to 12, but, but it also has the halfway marks. And so they could use a marker to really highlight those halfway marks and use it to help with rounding. Also using it for fractions, to find equivalent fractions. So this is a number line and it's divided into eighths. And so the problem has been uh, given to the students that uh, my exit is in, what is that? A quarter of a mile, how many eighths of a mile is that? And so they have one that's divided up in eighths, they have one that's divided in quarters and one that's in, divided in half. And so if it's one quarter, then how many eighths is it? Because they line them up and they can figure out their equivalents. That's not unlike what we do with um, counting blocks or Cuisinaire rods or, or other manipulatives where we are showing um, parts of a whole. So this, with younger students, we might take those sentence strips and fold them in equal pieces and then mark at the fold the, the fractional piece and then use that to help solve the um, equivalent problems. Number lines are also used for backwards and skip counting. Um, and this didn't even come from uh, touch math. This came from Max math worksheets for kids. And, uh, but we teach in touch math that to do subtraction, we do backward counting. When we do multiplication, we use skip counting. And then when we do division, we use them both because we're doing subtraction and multiplication uh, in division. But this is showing using the number line to uh, count backwards by fours. 
you could use a regular number line and have each number marked off and they are gonna count backwards by fours or they're gonna skip count by fours. Because if, as long as you have it marked off in equal portions. Uh, this one is skip counting by eights. Now I'm really bad at skip counting I've discovered and um, I need one that shows me skip counting by sevens. But each mark would have a different portion of it. And when you skip count, that tells you how many numbers you're skipping. And then another, um, another example is using parallel number lines to do um, comparisons. So in this first example, Five, uh, five bottles of water equals $3. Well, how much is $10, uh, 10 bottles of water going to be? And it would have to be somewhere, and it's somewhere between three and nine. So apparently you get, the more you buy, the cheaper it is. So when you go uh, 60 miles, if you're traveling one hour, 60 miles an hour, and you go two hours, how, how far have you gone? So the um, number lines are not just for adding and subtracting anymore. I found this, um, it wasn't related to that book, but I thought it was interesting that um, a lot of times students struggle with number lines when there are no uh, labels on the tick marks. So if I look at something and I see, okay, I see zero and I see something down the way, maybe 20, and then these tick marks or the, the increments and they don't look evenly spaced, I don't know what my, my um, uh, unit of measurement is. And so that makes it difficult to use the number lines. It says when drawing number lines, students don't evenly space the tick marks. I was one of these kids that that drove me crazy. So if I had to draw my own number line, I either used graph paper so I could make sure they were all equally spaced or I used a ruler, which in essence is a number line and made sure that my little marks were evenly spaced. Um, when it's open, like I said before, it's hard for the students to imagine the benchmark number. Um, not all number lines go up in increments of one. And I think we, uh, even with this, this is, this number line is used in the very beginning of uh, math. It goes up in increments of one, but as we saw in some of the examples, the increments might be in tenths or in hundredths, depending on what your purpose is. And then number lines are so abstract the students are unsure of what they might represent. We have to think of ways to, especially with math, we have to think of ways to connect students with math and their everyday. So you have students who are real, they love sports. So you have to tell, you have to show them how math is an integral part of sports because they don't see that naturally. So the same thing with the number lines. Number lines are very abstract. So you have to bring up what are, what are some everyday things that we have that basically take the place of a number line. One of them is a ruler. Another is a scale because you have something that you have zero to however, um, however far that scale goes. So pointing those things out helps make that the number lines um, more uh, real and more useful. 